Hello everybody. This is Di Anti-Natalist. And um, this just shows you how much I am out of the loop. <laughs> this used to be the liquor store and I probably haven't bought liquor in, you know, 10 months or something. But anyway, um, this is next door to a grocery store. And they have, uh, the liquor store has obviously moved, which is shocking. <laughs> and I haven't even noticed because I haven't been out shopping for liquor. But this whole area has been revamped and altered for the COVID situation. And I don't come to this grocery store. This is, um, um, there's like several grocery stores near my house. And I used to have three 24-hour grocery stores. Now, nobody is open 24. And it's really, really sabotaged my life. Um, you know, the fact that things aren't open late. And that's primarily when I like to go out or when, you know, I like to go out when there's no natalists and there's no natalist noise and confusion and chaos. And so basically, when you go out after 10 p.m., you find peace and quiet. And I don't have to compete with the mommy set and, you know, all the screaming children and babies and strollers and additional germs. So, this is pretty remarkable because there are so many curbside pickup stations with numbers like here that's 14 and this is 15 and so on. But there's two rows of this. I mean, it's almost like nobody is, is going out anymore. I mean, yeah, there's some people out. I mean, I guess the store closes at 11, so it's 20 minutes till 11. Um, but it used to be 24 hours. And so this is just a huge and remarkable change from, you know, five, six months ago. And um, everybody is using drive up or take out for everything. And um, so, you know, locally, it has just really, really, um, you know, jeopardized our way of life. And I know, I mean, this is relatively, you know, a privileged part of the country. We don't even have um, a COVID, um, a high COVID situation like many states do. And um, so in that way, we are privileged, right? <laughs> and um, we don't have the populations like Florida, Texas, California, um, and the border states. But yeah, it's a ghost town. It's really, really a ghost town. And uh, I went to Olive Garden tonight, um, to, you know, to, to get, they have the best salad, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, I went to Olive Garden and literally almost nobody was there. And I guess people are getting takeout, but that just means nobody is indoors. And, um, and um, places here are still having a real struggle trying to find workers because people were overpaid through unemployment. They were given probably two to three times more than their average salary for actually not working. In addition to that, they got a stimulus check. And so did the children in their household um, of course, it doesn't include everybody. It only includes certain incomes. Um, but, but of course, children got the money. And, you know, parents are just going to spend that money on weed and beer and cigarettes. Those children aren't going to get the money. Um, it's just disgusting. It's, it's disgusting how natalism wins and how natalism is... Um, catered to in our world and probably the most deserving of all people. No, not, not probably, definitely the most deserving people are the ones that do not reproduce and the ones who actually promote not reproducing. 
I saw a woman today, tonight. She had, you know, a child over her shoulders. And I was, um, you know, behind her. And I said, every child born will suffer, age, and die. And she turned around with an eerie expression. And I can feel what people are feeling. I can feel people's expressions. I can feel their emotions. And I've always been able to feel that. <laughs> so she was haunted. She was haunted and she was silent. Um, I've gone into I've gone into a little bit of detail about um, my ability to feel things. Um, it probably is to my detriment. But the other day, uh, I took an Uber, and um, me and a friend got into the car. But I was did not get into the car at the same time she was there. But when I got into the car, I felt something. I just felt that the driver was extremely hostile. The driver didn't say a word to me. It was the feeling and the energy that he put forth. When we both got dropped off, my friend told me what transpired before, you know, I got into the car. And she told me that he was so agitated. But, you know, I could feel the agitation. I could feel his impulsivity and his impatience and his hostility. Not to mention, uh, you know, probably just because of because of his name and because of probably the place that he was from, extremely misogynistic. And we were two women getting in the car, you know, going out by ourselves without a man or whatever. So it was really interesting how the feeling that I got from that man was exactly the feeling that she had gotten. And without him saying a word, so I'm able to feel things, and um, the mom definitely was haunted. And you know, she should feel haunted. Um, her and her husband, or her partner, placed that child into a very bad existence. And I see impregnated women, uh, you know, weekly, monthly, sometimes daily. And I don't know what, I, I just don't know how people, I, how can a couple, how can people dare have sex unprotected? I mean, how could a man, whether he's married or not, not use a condom? And like, how can he dare impose a life on another being? And, you know, there's people who hate life and who hate existence, yet they go on to create life. That blows me away. The person with the biggest handicaps, um, they could have mild um, Down syndrome. They could, have, um, you know, have um, autism. They could have uh, epilepsy. Um, you know, they could be an insulin dependent diabetic. They could have disabilities. They could have Crohn's disease or many of the um, very, very painful bowel conditions or some kind of other chronic condition like lupus. Yeah, what about lupus? And, you know, they reproduce. Like, I just don't get it. How can you dare, how can you complain about anything in this world, whether it's traffic, weather, crime, pollution, a pandemic, um, you know, poor employment conditions, um, not enough money, um, low wages, and still go on to have children. How? I, I'll never know. I'll, I'll never. Ho I'll never know the the disconnect that a biological parent is feeling when they reproduce, because for the most part, in a first world like this, you can prevent. You can prevent births, or you can um, use contraception to prevent con conception. So, it blows me away. And you know, I've seen I've seen pregnant people, women during the pandemic. Um, what are they thinking? Are they just uh, are they withholding their feelings because there's a lot to be upset about now there's a huge amount to be upset about 
And even in this, like where I live, first world, we have access to food, we have access to housing, we have access to everything, really. It's just very, very limited, and it's scary. I mean, to find your town, a literal ghost town, and to find, you know, hand sanitizer and gloves and masks, mandatory and, you know, predominant at the entrance of stores, you know, it's just, it's unsettling. And I find reproduction the most unsettling of all. It is unsettling and unforgivable. So thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe if you already haven't.